Next up, let's finish out these dashboard user pages. Then we'll be able to use these can activate and the can deactivate guards that the router provides us. Let's start in the dashboard component. This will pretty much do nothing for us except for link over to the user section. And that will use the router link over to the dashboard users route. We'll do a class of button, button large, button in danger, which will turn it red. That's all we need for the dashboard component. Let's make sure that looks good. All right, our dashboard section has the button. We'll click it, go to the dashboard users page. But we're having an error here. We were able to get to the users page, but we don't have an outlet for our children routes of the user section. Let's take a look at our routing. We have the users route, and we also have child routes of this user section. Since we have child routes, the Angular router is saying that we want a router outlet for these children to display. This one was able to go out into the main router outlet from our app component, but these child routes want another router outlet to pass into. Let's go ahead and do that under dashboard users. We're going to have an h2 tag, we'll call it the user section. And then we talked about having a left sidebar where we could show the list of users and the right side, which would show the details of user and the form to edit that user. So let's do some bootstrap classes to split up the left and the right side. We'll do a row. And then inside of that, we'll have a class of calm small four, and this will be our sidebar. And in here is where we will show the users. And then we'll also have a column small eight, which will be the details. And this is where those details will go. Let's say list of users goes here. And then down here is the router outlet, which will place the child routes and their components in here. Let's make sure that looks good. The dashboard is loaded again. We'll manage users. And we'll have our list of users and the user's home, which is the first child that gets displayed there. And the user's home goes there. Let's get our list of users, and then when we navigate to the username URL parameter, we should be able to see the user details component as well. Under the dashboard users component, let's bring in the user and the user service. While we could do a resolve here, we're just going to go ahead and use the onInit method and import it from there. We're going to back out twice, and then we'll go into the shared folder, models, user. We'll do the same for user service. Let's get a users here, and this will be an array of users. Then we can use our service to grab the data. This.service.getUsers. Then users. This.users is equal to users. Now we can display them. Since we don't have the users immediately following the creation of this component, we're going to use ngif. And we'll give it a class of a bootstrap class called list group. And we'll loop over the users, let user of users. And we'll give this a class of list group item. And we also need to create a router link. So let's break this down a little bit more. We're going to do the parameter binding since we need to pass in the username into the URL route router link is equal to, and we'll pass an array. The first thing is the string, which is dashboard users. And the second is the URL parameter, user.username. Then we'll display the user.name and close that a tag for us. And that should be good enough to show our list of users. 
go to dashboard, manage users. We're getting an error here. No provider for user service. That means the dashboard service doesn't actually know how to use the user service. And that makes sense because the only time we ever imported the user service was in the about module. And that was its own section. So we need to also import the user service into the dashboard section, the dashboard module. If we had imported into the app module, then the dashboard would have access to it from there. We didn't because we wanted to stay compartmentalized with our app, so we'll import from here, user service. From, we'll back out one, shared services, user.service. And providers, will add the user service there. Let's take a try there. We'll manage users. We can see our users. Let's click over and we can see user details. That child component gets brought into this section over here, this other router outlet. All right, we're getting closer to what we want to do. Next, let's go into the user section and start bringing in details about our user from there. Dashboard user details. Let's go into dashboard users component. We'll bring in the user and the user service. Copy that, paste that over here. And the constructor will need to bring in the service. Another really cool thing that we could have done is this about resolve service. We could have called that users resolve, move that out into the shared folder. And then we would be able to use that resolve here as well, since all we're doing is grabbing a list of users. And that way we can reuse that code as well. For now, this will do fine. We'll just grab the user and their information from here. We're going to give this class a user, which is a user. And we'll do this.service.getUser. We'll pass in the username, which we also need to grab, dot then. We need to grab that username, so we'll do let username equal this.route.snapshot.params, and we'll pull the username out of there. We also need to bring in the activated route. Let's make sure there are no errors, and then we'll move forward from there. Go Dashboard, Manage Users, click on a user, and we have no errors. What would be good to see is let's console log this out. All right, let's see if that is going to log out our user, and it does. This next part is actually a really important thing to remember about the Angular 2 router. The Angular router tries to be as efficient as possible. Now what this means is that it will reuse a component when it doesn't have to destroy it and create a new one. In our case, this user details component is going to get reused as often as possible. To demonstrate, let's show out some information here. We're going to do a div, and we'll make sure that this is ng if we have the user. And let's just user.name here. All right, so to demonstrate what I was saying about a reused component, if we click on Chris, we'll see this username. If we click on Nick here, we'll go to what Nick tweets as the URL, but our component did not change. If we ever have a scenario where we're going from one component to another without destroying and recreating it, then Angular 2 will go ahead and reuse that component. This means that we have to get our user a different way in ng-on-init. Let's go ahead and refactor ng-on-init to grab our user every single time this component gets updated. Right now we're using this.route.snapshot. This is going to be the first time the component gets instantiated, and this is the snapshot which will not change over the lifecycle of this component. The cool thing about the router is that it provides an observable for the parameters. Now you can think of an observable as data over time. 
So it's not just a snapshot, it's going to be the parameters over time as they change. Observables can really be seen in the HTTP library where it gets used a lot and it's actually supplanting the promise library for the way we want to deal with data. The Angular 2 team has used observables extensively throughout the framework, so we're going to use it here in the router. Instead of the snapshot, we're going to use this.route.params, and we want to make sure that on changes, we reevaluate our user. So we'll do for each, and this will look for changes here, and we'll grab the params. Inside of here, we're going to copy all of this, let username. And we don't have this.route.snapshot anymore, it's just params. And then we'll grab the user from here. Now these lines we don't need anymore. Let's save that. Now, Angular 2 and this component will look for every time the parameters and the route changes, and it will update the user in this component. Let's make sure that works. We can see Nick is here. Click on Chris and we see the changes made. All right. So that's a really good example of how observables are used throughout the router. It's just an interesting thing to keep in mind. If you're ever keeping a component and changing the data in that component, it makes sense to switch to the observables way of grabbing data. We've built out a good chunk of our dashboard section. Now we can actually start working on the form where we can edit these users.